Call the meeting to order. Mr. City Attorney, coming back from our closed session, do you have anything to report? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Council is in closed session this evening. Conference Legal Counsel on existing litigation on City of Gulf versus Seven Star. And there's no action to report. Thank you, sir. I'll close the special meeting, closed session, and open the regular meeting of the Gulf City Council. <laughs> Can you call roll, please? Excuse me. Vice Mayor Payne? Present. Council Member Hewer? Here. Council Member Campion? Here. Council Member Powers? Here. Mayor Cruz? Here. Okay, if you'd all rise, please, for a moment of silent prayer. And our flag ceremony this evening will be by Troop 119. Could you please read the video statement? This meeting of the Galt City Council is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cable cast without interruption on Metro Cable 14, the Government Affairs Channel on the Comcast and SureWest cable systems. Tonight's meeting can be seen on Channel 14 and will also be webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv this Friday and Saturday at 9 a.m. Tonight's meeting can also be seen via live video streaming on the city website at www.ci.galt.ca.us. A DVD copy is also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address council should fill out a speaker identification form and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing council and state your name for the record. Thank you. Do I have any agenda approval, additions, or deletions? Seeing none, we'll go on to presentations. New employee introductions. Mr. Barron? New employee introductions. Who do we have? I may be the only one tonight <laughs> that I'm aware of. So we do have two employees, and I'd like to ask Abdul Conte and Gabriela Gonzalez if they just come up and be recognized. Uh, we're very pleased to uh, give you a brief introduction to our two newest employees and uh, literally both have uh, started in their new positions this week. So uh, Abdul uh, is our newest uh, full-time hire. He's a plant mechanic uh, coming in to help us with our wastewater and water treatment system operations uh, and replacing a, a former longtime city employee who has moved on to other pastures. And uh, uh, company comes to us uh, from most recently from Sintas in I believe in Stockton. 
Um, and it was a maintenance mechanic for their plant there, which is a uniform laundry and uh, service. And uh, so I'm, he's already familiar with a lot of the same kinds of pumps and systems and electrical and control systems that we deal with. And we're very pleased to have him join our team. Yeah, is there anything you'd like to say at this point? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> and, um, Gabri sorry, Gabriela Gonzalez uh, has, is not a new face or a new name, but she has previously, the last several years, been a temporary uh, in our um, facilities maintenance unit, and uh, uh, she has recently been promoted to a part-time position, more hours, better benefits. Uh, she's a full-time student, I'm told, and is highly regarded by her fellow employees, and we're real thrilled to have her uh, moving up the ranks within Public Works, and we'd like to welcome Gabriela. Welcome. <laughs> this is my Christopher Memorial. So I'll be there for all of you over here. I'll lose the cheer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be younger than I am. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Well, welcome. All right. On to proclamations. Could I have Pastor Rick Keezer meet me at the podium, please? February 7th uh, through the 14th is uh, the City of Gulf is recognizing Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week. Congenital heart defects are the most frequently occurring birth defect and the leading cause of birth defect related deaths worldwide. And every year 40,000 babies are born in the United States with congenital heart defects and some are not diagnosed until months after their birth or years. A disproportionately small amount of funding is available for congenital heart defect research and support. Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week provides an opportunity for families whose lives have been affected to celebrate life and to remember loved ones lost, to honor dedicated health professionals and to meet others and know they are not alone. The establishment of, the, of Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week will also provide the opportunity to share experience and information with the public and the media in order to raise public awareness about congenital heart defects. Therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Galt, California, that February 7th through the 14th, 2015, be declared Congenital Heart Defect Awareness Week, that the Galt City, Galt community support the third annual Tiny Smiles event on February 7th, and all citizens be encouraged to increase awareness, education, and services for congenital heart defects. Thank you, Rick. Well, here we are again. Thank you guys so much for uh, letting me be here. I won't go through all of the statistics that uh, Mayor Cruz just went through. Um, in June of 2011, my son was born, and we gave him the nickname Tiny. Uh, which is where we get the name Tiny Smiles from. And depending on how you read it, it talks about uh, tiny smiles, these little smiles that these heart kids have. Or you can look at tiny miles, which is the distance that these kids have to travel, especially those that, uh, that survive. I cannot thank you enough, um, each of you, for all of the uh, support that you've given my family and I, and certainly this event. This year we're giving uh, the proceeds to the Children's Heart Foundation, which is the only foundation in the nation that was started to do fundraising solely for research on children's heart child defects. Um, my son Tiny lived six months, and in a short six months he had uh, three major operations, and I'm guessing probably 50 minor operations. Um, but I don't know how when they're touching the heart you can call it a minor operation. But nonetheless, that's where we got the name from. And so I'm excited that Saturday is our race. I'm not excited that Saturday we're supposed to get 10 inches of rain. So my prayer life has been consisting of moving the storms just north of us. Um, so if you would join me in that, that was, that was my silent prayer. I almost said it out loud just to encourage everybody to do the same. But thank you all so much. Pretty clear, thank you for your patience with my emails, and uh, I sure appreciate you. Thank you, guys.
Okay, the Parks and Recreation Commission report, please. Mayor and City Council, I would like to introduce uh, Janice Ruthinger. She is our uh, chair for Parks and Rec Commission. So. I'm on just to all my speech. <laughs> so I was invited here today to um, go over a few things that the Parks and Rec Commission in 2014 had input on. And so I'm just going to do some highlights things we did, and I'm going to defer all questions back to um, Mondo, <laughs> because I have somewhere else to be. <laughs> okay, um, housing related grant program is one thing we went over. Golf gator fees adjustment that went in effect last April. Um, budget for 2015. User studies, user fee studies and fee recommendations. The sale of cost property and the fees that are being earmarked to um, complete Walker Park Phase 1B, and park use, skate park, and camping ordinances. ordinances. I can't say that for you. <laughs> there you go. Those are just a few things that we were involved in last year. There was a lot more. And um, I'd just like to say that we really enjoy um, giving you input. and. Um, going over things that we like that you put down to us that are that deal with parks and recreation that we can mull over, go over with the public and then refer it back to you. And we really enjoy that. And I'm looking forward, we have a new crew this year. I think I'm the, the oldest one um, there. Um, and I'm looking really forward to it. We have a real diverse group, um, not just one sport or two sports, but really diverse. So I'm looking forward to this year. So, does anybody have any questions that maybe I could answer? <laughs> no? Oh. Okay, have a basketball game to get to. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Good work. Good. I don't know, should we put you on the hot seat and start asking questions? I'm ready, go ahead. <laughs> okay, moving on to public comments. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, members of the public may address the Council on non-agenda items. Speakers may address Council on any agenda item during consideration of the item. Speakers shall restrict their comments to issues that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council and limit comments to a maximum of five minutes. Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the Council Chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the Clerk. I see we have one speaker sheet, but that refers to item G5. So we'll move on to the consent calendar. Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Campion. My second was by Councilmember here, or was it a tie? No, I was saying it was Mary Lou and I. <laughs> Mary Lou. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Okay, call for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Payne? Aye. Council Member Hewer? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Powers? Aye. Mayor Cruz? Aye. The motion passes 5 0. Okay, under scheduled matters, it doesn't look like we have anything. Under the regular calendar, Treasurer's Office. Treasurer's report for the period ending December 2014. Mr. Farrell. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. First tonight, I would like to acknowledge uh, the AP government class from Liberty Ranch High School. They're here in attendance tonight. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here. And uh, try to get some of your other classmates here, OK? <laughs> All right, and, and my, my son is in that class, so that's why I, that's why I said that. Do you try give, to get him in here. Do you give extra credit? Because two of them are here since about 6.30. <laughs> no, I'd be a tough teacher. 
Um, anyway, the uh, Treasury's report is, is before you this evening. We just remember this is a snapshot as of December 31st of 2014. And I'll just kind of, in summary, I'll just go over it for the members of the audience. Um, collectively, uh, the city has a little bit over $34.5 million. And again, that's, uh, that money needs to be invested while it, it is idle. And when I say idle, the, those funds are designated for certain purposes, but just simply have not been spent yet. So I just wanted to make clarify that. Um, of that 34, uh, about 11 million is invested here locally in Galt at Farmers and Merchants Bank. Now, any money that's invested in farmers and merchants um, is collateralized. And what that means is farmers and merchants has to put up uh, government securities so if anything ever happens, then we as the city would have access to those securities and could get our investment back. Um, the majority of the money, approximately 60%, is in what are called government agencies. These are callable government agencies, which means that um, they're all five-year bonds, government bonds, mostly issued by the Federal Home Loan Bank. And as, or I should say, if and when interest rates ever decide to, to rise, um, these bonds will also rise because they usually they have, I, I buy what are called annual step-up bonds. So hopefully, whenever that happens, that the interest rates will also rise to, to stay with, uh, with the economy so we can get a, a larger return. Uh, for the December of 2014, we received a return of 0.81%. So it's a little bit over three quarters of, of a percent, which is an increase uh, from the previous month. And then uh, for the first half of the fiscal year, I'll report that the city received $137,881 in interest. So I'll answer any questions the council may have. Otherwise, I ask that you accept the treasury's report as, uh, as what's in front of you. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Call the vote, please. Vice Mayor Payne? Aye. Council Member Hewer? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Powers? Aye. Mayor Cruz? Aye. Unanimous vote. Thank you. All right. City Attorney's Office. Uh, good evening again, Mayor and Council Members. This is an ordinance prohibiting the cultivation of medical marijuana. This item was introduced at the meeting of January 21st. Uh, City Council uh, voted to introduce it at that meeting and waive further reading. If this ordinance is adopted this evening, it would prohibit both the indoor and outdoor cultivation of medical marijuana within the city. Uh, there's been no changes since the introduction of the ordinance, and it's presented for adoption this evening. Be happy to answer any questions. Council questions? I don't have any questions, but I want to call, make a comment, please. I just want to reiterate why I'm voting no tonight. Um, I do understand and sympathize with the problems that are going on in the city, but I um, want to quote Council Member Hewer as saying it's going to make some of our citizens criminals, and I truly do not see anything wrong with raising one or two plants from, from medicinal purposes, so I just wanted to state, in case anyone wasn't here last week, why I will probably be, be the only dissenting vote. Thank you. Anything else? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. One second. Call for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Payne? Aye. Council Member Hewer? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Powers? No. Mayor Cruz? Aye. Motion passes, four to one, dissenting vote. Council Member Powers. All right, Finance Department, Ms. Curio. Mayor and Council Members and Community Members, um, this evening staff is recommending that Council receive this report for informational purposes only. The quarterly financial reports are basically presented so that we can update uh, the community on the fiscal condition of the city. In general, annualized revenue should be at least 50% year-to-date collected. So if we look at the snapshot right now, just the general fund, um, we break it down into different categories, property taxes, other taxes, and so forth. And the dollar values on the very top represent the current budgeted amount. 
the line that goes horizontal would represent 50% of that specific revenue source. So some of them we fall a little short, some of them were a little higher than, and we'll go over those um, in just a moment. But overall, the general fund um, is currently, uh, we have collected 33% of budgeted revenues. And typically, the revenues for the first half of the fiscal year are low because some of the major revenue sources, such as property taxes, are not received until um, January. So we receive an advance, but it really isn't indicative of where we will be. So actually going through each category, if we take a look at property taxes, property taxes are budgeted at 41% of the general fund. And we have received the very first advance on the property tax, and based on that advance, it does appear that we will meet the budgeted amount, so it does look promising. Our revenues are actually budgeted at about 4.8% increase over last year's actual. We have a meeting scheduled with the assessor's office next month, so we will actually see what the assessor is estimating for our property taxes, so we will definitely keep council um, updated on that. We did receive some information that the vehicle in lieu of property taxes will be more than our estimate. We estimated 1628000 and we just received word that we will receive 1704000 So that is positive news in the amount of $76,000 in property taxes. On sales tax, which is a component of other taxes, thank you. Um, that's approximately 30% of the general fund budgeted amount. And um, the largest component of other taxes is sales tax. We budgeted about a 14% increase in the current fiscal year over last year. Um, sales tax actually went down by 2% um, quarter to quarter, but it actually went up by 12% from a year ago, same quarter. And a lot of that, without giving the actual information, was largely due to the opening of Walmart. We actually have one quarter of activity reported in our financials now. Um, we also received some information that our estimate from the sales tax compensation fund, which we only receive in January and May, it's not point of sales transaction, we expect that we will receive $57,000 more than budgeted, so that was definitely a good news as well for the general fund. With regard to licenses and permits, um, it's a small portion of the general fund, but definitely we have some positive news there. Building permits are really um, the largest source in this category. And um, we have issued um, several single-family dwelling units inclusive of signature homes as well as Emerald Park. And some of the commercial industrial projects are inclusive of L and Elwood products as well as McDonald's. Investment earnings is the next category in the general fund, and that's approximately 8% of the general fund. The most significant source is related to the interdepartmental loan between the city for the repayment of the police bond um, back to the general fund, so that has occurred. Fines and penalties, the largest revenue source there is parking citations, and amounts collected there are just about 46% of um, budgeted amounts. Revenues from other agencies, basically, we call it intergovernmental funds, is about 10% of the general fund budgeted amount. And um, the one item that we have received so far is um, a police grant, and that was just over $100,000. And the most significant grant in that section, though, is CDBG. And we have um, incurred some expenditures, and a request has been submitted for reimbursement, but we have not received any um, payments as of yet. Current services, charges for services, um, is approximately 6% of the general fund, and those are higher than the annualized budget amount, and the most significant items there are rents, and those are rents that we received from T-Mobile, AT&T, uh, Metro PCS, basically for our cell tower leases, and then our planning fees are higher than anticipated, or based on the annualized amount, again, those are inclusive of L and L Wood products. And the last category within the general fund is a combination of refunds and reimbursements as well as miscellaneous revenues. And those amounts are slightly lower than the annualized amounts, but the most significant items there are amounts that we get re uh, reimbursed for from California Waste or other incidental programs um, from services provided. On the expenditure side in the general fund, um, our annualized expenditure should be within 50%, and we actually are at approximately 51%. We did take a closer look at those expenditures, and all of the personnel amounts 
um, are within budget. There are a couple of items that we do need to bring to your attention. Um, employee group insurance is higher because we pay that one month in advance. Additionally, there are some overtime and part-time amounts that are higher than the annualized amounts, primarily because of the seasonality of work or staff vacancy, so you can see some part-time overtime amounts over the annualized amounts. Non-departmental for workers' compensation is over budget. Basically, our premium is paid once, once a year and it's already been paid, so it makes it appear as if we are over budget, but it was anticipated. And in the police department, um, you will see that we had expenditures for the dispatch radio system and fuel, which were previously reported under Measure R. Those were not eligible expenditures, so they should have been reported in the general fund pursuant to the budget, but they were not. So you do see them, and they are currently over budget in the police department. Um, the only other item there that I um, wanted to bring to your attention is community development department. Their salary line items are um, slightly over budget because we had budgeted the community development directors at a wrong rate. So. That was an oversight on our part. On maintenance and operations, we took a look at operations as well in the annualized amount. Some accounts might be a little higher than the annualized amount, primarily because one, one-time expenditures have already been incurred and or an encumbrance has already been reported, like a contract that will continue to spend on a monthly basis, but we encumber the full amount up front. Um, capital amount, same, same thing. We could have already purchased a capital item or we've encumbered something, but there wasn't anything in, unusual in any of the expenditure amounts that we do not believe that we can make that during the budget process. In the Culture and Recreation Fund, revenues are approximately 46% 40, of the budget. Um, the largest primary, the largest revenue source of the Culture and Recreation Fund is the Gulf Market, which is 77% of the Culture and Recreation Fund. Um, we are currently analyzing market activity. We, without an uptick in rentals, we believe that there is a possibility that budget amounts will not be attained. So we are taking a closer look at um, the market space rentals right now. As far as the expenditure side, expenditures are lower than the annualized budget amount. So that's definitely good news. We're at about 49% of annualized amounts. Um, with regard to the enterprise funds, there were no significant variances in the enterprise funds and on the expenditures. Two of the funds were within the annualized amounts and two of them were higher. One of them, there was a misallocation of an employee in the storm drain fund, so it appears as if the expenditures are over budget, but a correcting entry will be occur. And there is an over expenditure in the NPDES program. The budget is over budget. We are currently evaluating that. We did not believe that we carried forward the appropriate amount into the current fiscal year, so staff members are looking into that. I know that we have um, some interest in our gas tax funds, and um, so we are close to the annualized amount for our gas tax account and for the um, Sacramento Transportation Authority. No amounts have been collected, though, for our TDA funds or the intergovernmental street and most of those are based on reimbursement of grant amounts. Um, all of the expenditures um, are still appropriate though, and we are within the annualized budget amounts, short of some of the encumbered amounts. Measure R is exciting because the revenue source there is the transaction and use tax, and it's interesting there um, because we did an analysis, and 65% of the sales of the money that we receive are generated from within the city. 35% of Measure R is actually generated from outside the city. So we can see um, receipts coming in from some car dealership like um, Department of Motor Vehicles if you're doing a person-to-person -person transaction, CarMax, Floor and Road Toyota. But we can also see Macy's that is um, up in there. We can also see Amazon that's in there. So this is um, definitely exciting where 65% of the sales tax is generated in the city, but 35% is generated from outside the city and we're still benefiting from that additional half percent sales tax. So that's good news. I you you didn't do a breakdown on what's in, how much of that is attributed to internet sales or anything like that, did you? Um, well, actually we did some of that. So we <laughs> can actually see how much is generated from some of the internet sales yeah. from from, from um, car dealerships and from maybe even from from Lowe's and so okay. we can we can actually see some of that detailed information. Wow. So we were pretty excited when we were looking at fifty percent of the city sales and then we took that as a component of how much we're receiving and so that's kind of that is significant. We thought it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> On uh, assessment district, no revenues have been received. Again, we received that with property taxes in January and May, so that's not a surprise. 
But you will see that on the expenditure side, some of the expenditures are over the annualized amount because primarily we, we make the principal debt payments in September, so that was not a surprise we had anticipated that. And the good news on one of those assessments, District 1988-2, which is across the street by the golf course, um, that has now been fully paid. It was um, paid off in September of 2014, so we'll be winding down that, being sure all expenditures are paid, but that was definitely good news for that district. We were trying to refinance that district for years because the interest was so high, but um, because of the delinquency in that district, we couldn't get anybody to actually um, want to finance it. So it's good news that it actually has um, matured. Um, impact fees, as we all can see, the construction activity is going on and we are seeing receipts on building activities, again, primarily because of single family dwelling units, inclusive of those signature homes in Emerald Park, as well as Allen Elwood Products and McDonald's. And all the expenditures are um, within, um, we took a look at them and there was no surprises there. Again, the principal amount that was paid out of impact fees to the general fund for the bond was included. Twin City roundabouts for, with George Reed, those amounts have been encumbered, but not fully paid, so um, those were not surprises to the city. Um, so with that, um, that concludes my staff report, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that council has me this evening on the fiscal uh, update. I have a couple. Uh, Inez, can you tell me uh, what the sales tax was from the market, from Galt Market? I can. I hope. Um, from what I remember, because we actually have different geographical areas in the city, so we can't really report on a specific that the Galt Market is one geographical area. Um, the amounts that we receive from the Galt Market vary from about 1.8% of the total city sales to a high of about 3.5%. I think last quarter, it was the most recent quarter we had was just about uh, $9,500 out of the total amount for that quarter. Um, comparing it to, um, say, last year, is it, is it going up or down? Um, what's going on? <laughs> You'll bear with me just for a moment and see if I can pull that report real quick. See if I brought that with me. I'm wondering if it's sort of keeping pace with uh, what we're collecting in the rest of the town as far as sales tax. I think that'd be kind of hard to tell because you don't track total sales out there other than what is reported to the city, correct? Well, There's no way to tell. Well, we, we actually can um, track the vendor that's reporting. They are required to submit the report to the State Board of Equalization. Um, what we provide to council is just in a total amount because we can't give individual detailed information that is considered confidential. So if I was to look at um, the last quarter, there was um, I said approximately 9,500. The actual amount that we received was $9,656. Quarter to quarter from a year ago, um, we were right in there. It was 9,567. So it's approximately the same amount year to year. Same, about the same. That is correct. Okay. Uh, the only other question I had was regarding revenue from other agencies. Um, it said request for reimbursements have been made but no payments have been received. Is there, is there a reason why? We will actually um, communicate with different departments. Um, the largest one is Community Development Block Grant and that one is um, the oversight department is Public Works. And um, we do follow up with them every month and the last update we received was that uh, invoice has been submitted and we just haven't received it by the end of the first quarter. So we do expect, and I didn't check as of today, but we would expect that the uh, reimbursement will be paid. So it just wasn't received as of the second quarter. Okay. If I may add, it's, it's typically a, a tiny game, typically 30 to 60 days with a state agency to see if they have to review our claim, compare it to the approved grant amounts and look at the activity and then process through the state controller um, a payment amount. So we have to expect that in the next quarter's report you'll see a big bump in several fronts. CDBG, we've invoiced the state uh, for um, for a major piece of uh, remaining piece of the Twin Cities interchange project and we also um, 
uh, have sent some invoices forward on various other uh, grant funded projects that we expect. Uh, in the enterprise fund area, we build almost four million dollars to our uh, <coughs> to the both the EPA and our SRF, which is a loan which we have to invoice for as we incur costs. So that's the loan you previously approved, but that'll be helping with the cash flow uh, where we've uh, we've invoiced a uh, m several progress payments forward year to date, which are again totaling well in excess of three million dollars that will be coming back into our fund. So there's no problem in you know the seeing problem in collecting what we should be collecting. No, we think things are working their way through the normal process. We were probably a little slow in getting those necessary boxes checked and processed at Public Works, but they have since been invoiced, and we expect in the next quarter that all of those funds will be received. Okay. When we start to look at cash flow analysis, one of the things that Sean mentions on his staff, on his staff report is that we anticipate we have sufficient funds up for the six months, next six months. So when we did the cash flow analysis, it's like, okay, we need to get those invoices out. So we've been working public works, but on top of that. So uh, we expect those to be paid in the next quarter. Right. Okay. Thank you. I have no more questions. Any further comments by council? Questions? No. no. Okay. This is an informational report. So thank you, Inez. You're welcome. Thank you. Human Resources, Ms. Islis. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Before you tonight is the Galt Police Officers Association MOU. We just concluded negotiations and this uh, time period is July 1st, 2014 through December 31st, 2017. In addition um, to the MOU before you tonight is uh, salary recommendations, which I will go into just a little bit after I've highlighted the MOU. As you know, this is our third and final MOU that we've negotiated for our bargaining units this year. And the GPOA has some similarities and a few minor differences from um, what we brought before you um, just recently. The term is the same as the other two, July 1st, 2014, again through December 31st, 2017. Patrol hours will be um, changed and implemented hopefully by on or around April 1st, 2015. Um, they will, the police department will be establishing a corporal program and um, eliminating the field training officer or combining those two actually and, and coming up with um, you know, a corporal program which provides a lot of opportunity for our officers. A wage adjustment is 6% and um, Similar to the other bargaining units, the COLAs in July 1 of 15 and 16, we had a change in longevity pay, which will hope um, the goal is to encourage retention for our officers. And um, there will be a matching, um, which is a little different than we've done with the 457 plan in the past. Um, employees in the covered by GPOA, if they contribute 1%, the city will match those funds and into the deferred compensation plan. And the city's con contributions will terminate at the end of the MLU on December 31st, 2017. Again, um, bilingual pays, the uniform is increasing slightly, and um, medical benefits were different for GPOA until this MOU, and now um, the contribution amounts will be the same as the um, GPSU and the unrepresented employees. In addition to the MOU, um, the recommendation is also um, for a revision to the mid-management and management um, salary schedules, in particular the police lieutenant position and the police chief positions. The recommendation is, to, um, is for a 6% increase, similar to the police officers, the same as police officers. And the reason for the recommendation is that um, what we've normally done in the past is we've it increased those positions um, similar to the police officer positions to avoid salary compaction. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have. I do. I have some matter of There is no uh, copy of the survey included in the packet, so I was wondering, one of the um, drivers of giving the police officers an increase was because their salary was below the median compared to other cities. Uh, we had no information about the um, 
police chief and the lieutenants, how their salaries compared to other cities. Well, actually, I, I talked to uh, uh, HR beforehand, and right now the, the chief is about 7% above comparator cities, and the lieutenants are about 6% above comparator cities as it is today. They would go to 13 and 12% if this is approved the way it is. Um, you know, this is something that is um, sort of, I have to say, sprung on me tonight. Yeah. I would like to have the opportunity to look at uh, the first part of the resolution for the police officers and perhaps come back to the other one with more information. I, I would agree with you. Um, I think that um, the resolution can probably be approved by deleting a couple of the whereas as it relates to the chief and the uh, lieutenants. Um, as well as the last uh, thing to be it further resolved, but I'll let the city attorney um, respond to that. Um, if the council decide, desire to move ahead with approval of the GPOA MOU this evening, but not the uh, management, uh, mid management, I would recommend deletion of the last two whereas in the draft resolution. And then also uh, on the action items, there's four action items. The first one is the approval of the GPOA MOU. Second one is authorizing the manager, manager to approve that agreement. Third one is the modification of the GPOA salary schedules. So um, the recommendation would be to delete the last action item at the bottom of the uh, first page. So with those modifications that would allow the approval of the uh, MOU this evening. Yeah, because I, I don't think the issue of compaction really is that issue when the police officers were at six percent below the comparator cities, uh, just simply bringing them up to where the comparisons are that the city uses for all positions. And uh, the chief and the lieutenants happen to be a little above that right now by about six percent. So it would put them further out of skew, at least in my opinion. And, and I do agree with you that uh, um, if we should look at that more. Okay, and uh, if if it's appropriate, I'd like that motion to eliminate uh, item number three. I would second that uh, as set forth by the city attorney. Exactly. So I would second that. So is that in good direction to bring back the others at a, at the next meeting with further discussion? I'm always open to further discussion, especially yeah. since we didn't really have any information yeah. tonight. Yeah. I agree. What, okay. I agree. Was the plan with the 6% for the police chief and the lieutenant, was that also going to come out of the Measure R retention? I mean, was that, was that anticipated to be out of Measure R? Um, I believe it was. I don't know that we had any specific discussion about that, but the 6%. I was wondering, because part of the GPOA was coming out of Measure R retention. Right. Under the retention issues, I just wanted to know if the chief and the lieutenant were also in there. Yeah, I think that it would be a little bit difficult because the retention issue was because they were below market. Mm -hmm. If you're above market, how could you call that retention? I don't, I don't see how well, that would. Well, it's still, it's still anything that you do to either retain or recruit competent employees is still in the same thing. The, the salary survey is really just one instrument that you do to gauge um, your ability to recruit and retain employees. And what we've historically done is, you know, the police officers, we negotiate the, G, the, the MOU, and when we took the other unrepresented employees, we didn't intentionally take the police chief and the lieutenants because they typically follow the other, the other police officers because you have a, a series and so you have a police officer and then you have a sergeant. A sergeant makes a certain percentage more than a police officer and then you have a lieutenant that makes a certain percentage more than a sergeant and then you have a police chief that makes a certain percentage more than that. And if you, if you bring up the lower ones, now all of a sudden they're butting up right up against the, the lieutenant and chief positions. You have, you have potentially an issue with compaction that uh, Ms. Eastless was was talking about. Um, I don't know exactly what that, how significant that compaction is. We'd have to kind of look at the numbers and see when you put them back into the salary schedules where the sergeant, and because what you don't want is you want your, your sergeants to be able to promote up to lieutenant. And if this, the difference between a sergeant and lieutenant is so small, you're going to have a hard time doing that. Sure. And so what we'd want to look at is what, if, if they didn't get the 6%, what does that 
difference between those two positions look like? Is that still significant enough to allow a proper progression of employees through the range? And so those are things we can bring back at the next meeting and have the council take a look at. Yeah, I'd like to see that brought back and right. broken down to work on what that actually looks like and, and where that 6% will be funded from. Sure. I'd appreciate the additional information also. Okay, so bringing this back, we currently have a motion on the floor to approve and a second. it. And a second. To approve it as written with the removal of Section 3, is that correct? Yeah. Um, it's, actually, uh, it's actually the last two whereas right. clauses. And then there's four action items. It's the deletion of the last action item at the bottom of the page. And I'd also like to recommend in the title of the resolution that uh, we delight or delete the uh, last three words, management and mid-management. Okay. Okay. that okay with you, Mr. Kanka? Yes. Okay. Uh, the Barbara made the motion. Yes. Barbara. And I'll second that again. Okay. okay. With that, call for the vote, please. Okay. Vice Mayor Payne? Aye. Council Member Hewer? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Powers? Aye. Mayor Cruz? Aye. You yes. As amended, thank you. Okay, moving on to the police department. Updated measure our expenditure plan, Chief Bowen. This will be presented by Lieutenant Kalinowski this evening. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. Um, before you on the updated measure our expenditure plan, which captures um, the vote you just took for the raises for the police officers, which in part um, fund the 6% salary adjustment for the uh, golf police officers, the new corporate program, and oh, a more aggressive um, longevity pay program in an effort to retain those officers. Um, on page two of the report, it shows a four-year analysis of the expected um, increases, which um, for this fiscal year are 273,000. The following is 292, 325, and 350. With incredible help from the finance director and the city manager and the city attorney, I present you Exhibit 1, which is our final um, rendition of this, and um, using a matrix of overly aggressive expenditures, that's fully rolled up employees at Classic PERS and Full Family Medical, you see um, our ongoing expenditures um, broken down in different areas. Some of those involve the grants and what we estimate some expenditures to be, some salary savings I've identified that we will pick up this fiscal year. Um, and as we prepare the mid-year budget review going into the second year of the budget, I believe we will find some structural savings in the ongoing years, <coughs> primarily based on the fact that there's some of those employees that we thought we were hiring at Classic FERS are actually PEPRA employees, which save some money year to year. So we will bring that back. But at the end of the day, based on the information that we had for this, shows us fully expending to measure our revenues and residual balance based on what I, what I term sort of very conservative revenue numbers and aggressive expenditure numbers. Okay. Thank you. I'm prepared to answer any questions if you have any. Okay. Prior to questions, we have one public comment. Al Baldwin. Al Baldwin, a concerned citizen of golf, and this city is a, a growing character concern. It's getting better and better and better, and we can't figure out why. I think it's the people. It just has to be. But tonight, I'm a bit concerned, and if I'm wrong, I'd like to have somebody tell me I'm wrong. I'm looking at this differently. It, it's more or less a public conception. I have five minutes this time, and I hope I can do it in five minutes. I think I can. Measure R, the fund police services, this was what it was, to fund police services such as the hiring additional officers, providing advanced training, expanding anti-gang and drug police activities, participating in the regional anti-drug task force, increasing, this is it here too, this is what's interesting, increasing neighborhood foot slash bike patrols, Increasing police presence in schools, parks, and removing graffiti. Shell City of Golf Ordinance living a transaction in use tax of one half percent. And with all the funds staying in golf, citizens' oversight, 
and independent annual audits, audits will be approved. I'm glad Lori Hewitt brought up the question about the funding because I'd like to know if the funding for the increase in officers is going to come from Measure R. The, the reason I'm questioning this is because I thought most of it would be coming from the general fund for any increases like this, and what you're doing is tapping into Measure R funds, which you've done in the past, which we tried to stop when we made Measure R with loopholes. And you found a lot of them, or a few of them, and, and you're using it, and it's your prerogative because you're the council. You're the one taking this whole district and, and getting through it. I, I just have a challenge with this about using Measure R funds to increase the city. Um, and I, believe me, I have all respect for the police officers. They, they are doing an excellent job. They continue. They're, they're, they're just the best in the West, I think. But, but, but the, the funding is the challenge with me right now and possibly others. And will the funding come out of the general fund or are you trying to take all the funding out for this increase for one time with that, whatever it is, out of Measure R funding? And if that's the case, I just have a little bit of a challenge understanding that. And I'm assuming that Lori Hewitt had the same challenge. Barbara Payne was on the panel when it first started, and she's the only one up there that was on the council at the time. She knows the intent of Measure R and what we wanted to do. First of all, you have not, <laughs> I don't know if you ever will, put foot uh, or bike patrols in the shopping center. So why would you want to do that anyway? Well, let me tell you why real quick. We have panhandlers in Galt in all the shopping centers. We get approached whenever I go to Walmart or Save Mart or any of these. I seem to, not all the time, but quite a few times, get approached by panhandlers wanting this, wanting that. They're sitting on the curb. They're sitting by the stores. They ask you, oh, can you charge, uh, jump my battery in the car while you're coming out with your car? So possibly something could be going on there. They could be taking some. We've had some people, uh, with, and not knocking teenagers, but teenagers they were, uh, grabbing purses out of the shopping carts and running with them. Where is the police presence in the shopping centers, as it stated, neighborhood foot and bike patrols? You have the money, you're taking that money and putting it in raises. And definitely police should get paid what's a fair raise, don't get me wrong. But coming out of Measure R Fund, we need to complete the Measure R Fund before we can even take any money out. Although there are loopholes, and they, they've been done in the past, I understand that. Public can, is, is, may understand that, but if you ever try passing another one like this, this is going to come up. How did you change this when it was proposed? And no matter what you do, you're going to find a loophole or two or three in it that you can manipulate it around so that you can use it. I'm not against the police department, but if I'm wrong in assuming this, please let me know. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Unless you want to say something? No. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Al. Mayor, if you sure. mind, I would uh, like to address those please. those comments. I, I think it's really good that Mr. Baldwin brought up those because I'm sure it's a question that members of the, the public might have. We currently have, I think, eight officers that we've hired using Measure R funds. Some of those have been from grant funds. I think the most recent one was partially a grant fund, partially Measure R. And so those are officers we put on the streets, we put in our schools. We currently have two school resource officer uh, positions. We also have two uh, dispatch positions that are funded. So that was the priority of Measure R, was to get officers on the street, in the neighborhoods, in the schools, combating drugs and gangs, and we've done that. We've, we've fulfilled the expenditure plan associated with Measure R. Measure R said that we were to hire seven uh, officers. We've hired more than that. And, and Measure R was very clear that, that the funds were to be used for police services in, in, in general. And the first focus was for hiring new officers. After that, we can use it to bolster the police department in general to make our, our department more competent, more professional, and to provide better services to the community. One of the things specifically addressed in Measure R was for the recruitment and retention of officers. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have a bunch of officers that are not well compensated. We're losing them 
hand over fist to other agencies. We're not able to recruit um, officers. So this this was this was known and discussed during the Measure R discussions. This wasn't a loophole. This was sp specifically put in Measure R. So we knew we wanted to build a very competent police force. And so now that we've we've committed and we've addressed the first order of business with Measure R, which is hiring the officers. Now we're turning our attention to making sure that we're able to recruit and retain officers because the last thing you want is to hire officers and then six months, a year, two years, three years down the road, they leave. You've trained them, you've got them up to speed, they know the community, and then they leave. And that's what we've seen over and over again. And so this specifically is meant to address that problem of our problem with, with retaining qualified, competent officers. And, and staff is, is very comfortable, very confident talking with the public about the need for this. And just, just as we were when we first pr proposed this and discussed it with the community. This was part of the plan all along, and we stuck with all the commitments that we've made to the community. And I'm just sitting here shaking my head yes because I was on Major R and I remember that very well. Any more questions? Just in, I mean, one of the reasons why I support using the money for using Major R funds for retention is we invest a lot of money in our employees. We invest a lot of money in training. We hire employees police officers, we train them, we and then another agency offers them more money and we lose them and we start over again. And so in the long run, if we pay our officers so that we keep them and retain them, we will be saving money in the long run because we won't be hiring and we won't be having to train new officers again and to lose them. So it was one of the reasons why and, and Mr. Berman and I had lots of discussions over it because of, of that issue. But in the long run, because we make an investment, I think it is retention. And we need to retain those officers and we need to pay them so that we can retain them. Well said. Very well said. Uh, coming from the police department, I can, uh, I can support what you're saying as far as retention. And for the longest time, our police department was known as the training ground. We'd hire them, we'd train them, they'd stick around for five years, and off they go to another agency. Why? A lot of it was pay. A, a lot of the other reasons were advancement. We're a small agency. We don't have a lot of the advancement that some of these bigger agencies have. Are we working on it? Yes, we are. So one of the ways we can eliminate that is to close that gap monetarily for them. Yeah, I'll just add one comment. <laughs> the, um, the schedule change actually is the biggest savings piece for the Gulf community. It creates positions with existing staff that allow us to staff new positions like the problem-oriented policing team, which will have two members assigned by the end of the month, which will start with the April shift change. So where it seems like people are not getting a benefit or something new out of it, we're in, in fact reinvesting existing dollars with some raise that we had to give in order to get. And um, I think uh, what happens here tonight is a first big step for the police officers and the sergeants in the organization. And we're not going to stop the uh, overall um, exodus of the department because people always think the grass is going to be greener on the other side. But it goes a long way in professionalizing the organization through the corporate program and a number, a number of other things that we're doing and that you've approved recently regarding Kalia and other things. And so uh, we all want to turn on a dime in a day, but it's going to take some time. I think this is a huge first step. And so um, I personally appreciate it. So thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lieutenant. Do we have a motion or any further discussion? Make a motion to accept resolution. A motion by Council Second. And a second by Council Member Campion. Call for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Payne? Aye. Council Member Hewer? Aye. Council Member Campion? Aye. Council Member Powers? Aye. Mayor Cruz? Aye. Passes unanimous vote. Moving on to communications. Let me get this backwards. We're going to adjourn to the Galt, from the Galt City Council and reconvene to the Galt Successor Agency. You really want to call for the vote? Or the roll? <laughs> There. Okay, there we go. Okay, right. roll call vote. Roll call, please. Uh, board members Payne? Present. Hewer? Here. Campion? Here. Powers? Here. Cruz? Here. Public comment? I don't see any. 
Consent calendar. Do I have a motion to accept? So moved. Second. And a second. Call for the vote, please. Payne? Aye. Hewer? Aye. Campion? Aye. Powers? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Passes unanimously. Departmental, we have a subject of the adoption of an annual successor agency administrative budget for July 1st, 2015 through July 30th, 2016. Mr. Stewart. Hey, thank you, Chair, and good evening, members of the board. Uh, real quickly, uh, this budget does uh, cover the fiscal period of July 1, 2015 through June 30th, 2016, and it includes only the estimated general administrative costs of the successor agency related to duties and support services associated with the Oversight Board, Department of Finance, and County Auditor requirements. Uh, the funding source for this uh, budget is the Successor Agency's Redevelopment Obligation and Retirement Fund. And this fund uh, receives monies from the county auditor and controller to, put, to pay the agency's enforceable obligations. Um, and then these, uh, this funding from the county is from the Redevelopment Property Tax Trust Fund. And it holds the property tax revenues that were previously distributed to each former redevelopment agency. Um, the personnel section of this uh, budget identifies full-time equivalent positions, and these are uh, the, the folks that uh, basically devote their time to the oversight board uh, related op uh, operations. And it should be noted also that although this budget does show expenditures over uh, 250000 we can only get uh, the maximum reimbursable amount would still be capped at 250000 for the health and safety code. Um, with that, the uh, personnel and the maintenance of operations uh, portions of the budget are basically uh, the same as last year's, uh, with the exception of the 2% COLA that was uh, given to personnel. Um, other than that, the Oversight Board must subsequently approve uh, the successor agency's adopted administrative budget, and that has been agendized for the Oversight Board meeting on February 26, 2015 along with board's consideration of the recognized obligation payment schedule. And uh, with that, uh, that concludes my report. If you have any questions, I'll uh, try to answer them for you. Do we have any board members who have questions? No questions. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept? Move to accept. Second? Second. Call for the vote, please. Board members Payne? Aye. Hewer? Aye. Campion? Aye. Powers? Aye. Cruz? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. We will adjourn from the Galt Successor Agency and reconvene to the Galt City Council. City Clerk's Report. Public Safety Committee appointments. Okay. Uh, Council Member Payne, I mean, excuse me, Powers, you have an appointment to the Public Safety Committee and I had to have one letter received from Mr. Bill Wilman. Yes, I'd be very happy to uh, put him on the committee. It was a very nicely written letter. I would have called him and talked to him, but he didn't have the phone number anywhere. <laughs> so, okay. Great, thank you. Very good. And the other thing, I have the calendar of city meet, meeting and events. The On Saturday is the Galt Winter Bird Festival. Yes, At McCaffrey, uh, starting at 8 o'clock and goes until 4 o'clock. Then on February 11th, we have the Parks and Rec uh, Commission meeting right here in Council Chambers at 7. February 12th, the Planning Commission meeting, 6.30 here at Council Chambers. We are closed Monday for President's Day on February 16th, which brings us to City Council meeting on February 7th. All right. Comments by staff? Start down here. Uh, just real quick, uh, as a reminder, yes, the Planning Commission meeting is next Thursday, and we'll be... Uh, going over the new uh, development code, hopefully getting a recommendation from the uh, commission to bring back to you along with our new uh, landscape design guidelines as well. That's all I, I don't normally try to surprise the city manager with announcements, but uh, we just received a letter today, dated yesterday, that the Twin Cities Road Roundabouts project uh, has won an award um, and has been selected by the Sacramento section of the American Society of Civil Engineers as the Community Improvement Project of the Year for 2015. Outstanding. We'll talk a little more about that in the weekly report, but uh, that's Yay. fresh off the press. Good. Good job. She's bowing. I'm sorry. Mondo? Mondo. Inez? Inez? <laughs> Almost forgot. 
<laughs> I just wanted to announce that um, we have hired the deputy finance director, so he will be starting on Monday. Uh, Greg Lushido, he does come from private industry. He previously worked with MGO, which is a firm in the area that does international work as well. They did some work here with the city of Gulf a couple of years back, so I'm sure that um, um, he will be, um, we're glad that he's joined the city of Gulf. <laughs> And you'll bring them back and introduce them. Yes, absolutely. We'll be part of the employee reduction for the future company. Outstanding. I just have one thing, and that's um, kind of expanding on what Lieutenant Kalinowski had to say regarding what you approved tonight regarding the uh, contract for the officers. And I think it kind of points to Mr. Baldwin's comments also. Uh, this will allow us to do some things regarding ships changes, which will allow us to have more people on the street with the same amount of people we have hired now, which will be better for the citizens and uh, also for the police department regarding responding to different calls and having people allocated at different times of the day versus uh, the way it's currently done. So I'm pretty excited with the approval that you did tonight, and we're very thankful it was done. Okay, thanks, you, Chief. Mr. Behrman. Just a reminder about the Winter Bird Festival this weekend, Friday night dinner, and then Saturday we'll, I'm going to join Pastor Rick in the back praying for no rain on Saturday. I know it's looking like it's going to come in, but uh, hopefully it doesn't I'd like to object right. to that motion. Hopefully <laughs> 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 we put it off till after. So. Uh, that's fine with me. So, should be good. Those of you that haven't uh, bought tickets to the tours, uh, there are uh, tours still available. If you're not actually going on tour, just come on out to McCaffrey on Saturday and enjoy one of the speakers and the exhibits that we have out there. It's always a good time. All right. And Mr. Rudolph? And it's free. And it's yeah. free. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Rudolph. Okay. Hey, City Council, Mr. Campion, we'll start at your end. Very good. Uh, I, I guess I'll be with Pastor Rick out there. and. Uh, it's kind of a 50-50 on prior for rain since last year I was standing out in the rain and uh, so we'll uh, see how that goes and looking forward, to, I'm really looking forward to the dinner Friday night and uh, the bird festival is always great fun and I attend it every year and I'm looking forward to that too. Absolutely. Lori. So I just wanted to thank Mr. Stewart for his tour planning that he gave me a couple of days ago. And um, looking forward to the tour tomorrow and visiting all the public facilities tomorrow. So um, otherwise, I hope to see everyone on Saturday. Great. Vice Mayor. Uh, just say that we have a lot of things happening in our town this weekend and uh, everybody get out and support everything that's going on. If you have to bring your umbrellas, do that and your galoshes. Never run in galoshes, but it'd be fun. <laughs> kind of fun. Um, so that's it. Okay. I too will be off for tiny, the tiny smiles run. You have the paramedics on standby, correct? <laughs> Just in case they actually do catch me. <laughs> I, asked him what he, I asked him what he was going to do if they matched him up. I go, what are you going to do if those kids start running past you? Mayor down. <laughs> uh, those of you who haven't and that can make the event, Friday night really seems to be a, 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 uh, a fun event. I guess the, uh, I'm trying to remember, the Mary Youngblood is going to be out there playing the flute for us. That's what's out of play. That's the play that, that ties into it. It's going to be really uh, enjoyable. Also that weekend on Saturday, uh, starts in Lodi and it's actually going to be touching golf, is the Wine and Chocolate Festival. If you like wine, you like chocolate? There you go, people. We've got plenty of wineries. Uh, the one group will be involved is, as far as our city is concerned will be our city winery down on 4th Street in the Old Town area. Please come on down, but please drink responsibly. And with that... Well, and when the, also, Mayor, on Friday night there is an event <laughs> for families. There is a movie night at McCaffrey for families as part of the birth festival. So there is the dinner that's an adult event, but there is a family event taking place at McCaffrey. Thank you. Okay, with that we will adjourn.